Tomorrow on Home and Garden Television, meet a superstar who's never forgotten what it's like to be hungry and poor, and who's now helping the homeless to grow their own food. I believe in helping people, and this is what the ongoing project is all about. Eartha Kit, from femme fatale to vegetable grower. Then discover an inexpensive way to furnish your home with marble. Home and Garden Television, tomorrow at 1600 CET, 1500 UK on NBC. Meet a superstar who's never forgotten what it's like to be hungry and poor, and who's now helping the homeless to grow their own food. I believe in helping people, and this is what the ongoing project is all about. Eartha Kit, from femme fatale to vegetable grower. Then discover an inexpensive way to furnish your home with marble. Home and Garden Television, today at 1600 CET, 1500 UK on NBC. On Star Gardens, Eartha Kitt, the cat woman, is with us to bring us a heartwarming story of how gardening is helping the homeless. And hold on to your hats, partner. Corey Everson has a Wild West garden even a cowboy would love. That and more on Star Gardens. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Star Gardens. Nice to have you with us. I'm Rob Weller, and today we're coming to you from the Huntington Library and Botanical Gardens in Pasadena, California. Our first star today, well, one of a handful of performers to be nominated for an Oscar, an Emmy, a Grammy, and a Tony. It's Eartha Kitt. With all that success, Eartha still knows what it's like to be poor and hungry. Eartha has become the spokesperson for Project On Growing. Now, this unique upstate New York organization has been helping the homeless learn to grow their own food. helping people but people have to help themselves in order for us or anyone like the saying says God help those who help themselves and this is what the own ongoing project is all about Eartha Kitt is giving God a little help these days She's teaching the homeless how to get off the streets by getting into the fields You should squat. Can you squat? That saves you back, you know. Yes, and yes. it makes you use your thighs. Yes. And it saves you back. Be conscious of every muscle in your body as you do. Isn't this beautiful? What are these people learning from this experience? By growing their own food. They plant their own food, for instance, starting from scratch. They can uh, then be they are taught how to can it, how to cook it. They will then be able to, we're trying to teach them how to start a little business for themselves mm -hmm. and sell it in the marketplace so that people will be responsible for themselves. They can get themselves off the street. They have some place to go where they can learn farm, trade, food, trade, something like that. And then go out on, get themselves or we try to help them get jobs as well. Put them in a place where they can be self-sustaining. And there is no better example of self-sustaining than Eartha. On her own as a child, she rose to superstar status in the 50s and 60s. One of just a handful of entertainers nominated for the Oscar, Emmy, Grammy, and Tony Awards. The Kit was also a cat, TV's original cat woman. But in 1968, her highly publicized criticism of the Vietnam War during a White House luncheon nearly ended her career. Unofficially shunned for nearly 10 years, Eartha has climbed back with a third autobiography, 
a five CD collection of her music and a continuing interest in gardening. I watched the farmers when I was a kid in the South, and I think the things that I saw I never forgot. Mm -hmm. And the necessity to survive, to me, is really from the dirt. Boy, you really come, you come from the earth. The dirt. You come from the dirt. <laughs> when we're talking Hollywood dirt, you had a whole new meaning to that. That's right, my name is Earth, but I'm sure. <laughs> you know the kind of man I've always wanted to marry? What? The kind of man who would dig with me in the garden. <gasps> really? No kidding. We wanted to watch television. I think that's one of the reasons why we're now divorced. Are you still looking for a digger? Yes. Not digging for gold, right? but digging for food. So to, to marry Eartha, here we have 1-800-DIG-DEEP. There you go. We just put that number right up there. <laughs> a digger, a planter, a harvester, anybody who could do anything in with the dirt. That's, that'll make you happy. Something constructive with the dirt. You know, it's so appropriate. We've got some little barn swallows that are up here, and they're, uh, I think they're pretty mad that we're invading their space right now. Isn't that a beautiful sound? And now we're sitting in a barn. This is where I used to hide when I was a kid in the South. Really? I'd hide in the barn because I didn't want anybody to see me. Hiding from what? From people. People thought I was an ugly duckling. I'm a yellow gal. So I was not given the proper attention or the kind of attention that the other darker-skinned kids were getting. And therefore, my hiding place was in the barn. Eartha remembers only being happy when she was in a garden. Now she's sharing her experiences with others less fortunate. Vegetable gardens are serious business for you, huh? It is very serious business. But I, I know where the food came from. I can see the food growing. I know how it got there. And when you take the food from the ground, take it to the table, wash it, cut it up, put it in the pot, and then you put it on your plate. It's a very spiritual thing, too. Not only is it feeding you nourishment-wise, but intellectually and spiritually. Look at that. You can put, just put it in there. Okay? Now, we have to do our little ritual. <laughs> now, I'm singing for my supper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bertha, these are all plots that everybody's been starting to work, right? Yes. This particular plot is yours, is it not? This one belongs to the ladies who are here, because yes. the Manhattan Bowery Corporation. This plot that's... The Manhattan Bowery Corporation. Are you yes. ladies a part yes. of that? Yes. So community. you're all from, uh, all from, uh, all in Manhattan? Yes. yes. Who knows about gardening? Who's really good in the vegetables? Mama, go ahead. I, I am. You are? Yes. You're, so you're the pro? I'm the pro. And these are all the rookies, and you had to teach them. She was just yes. waiting for the call. Now, are you guys getting smart? Are you, uh... We're getting good at They all learning from I don't... Me. I'm from Vermont, and I don't know anything about farming. Well, I don't know. I just love the animals. <laughs> I'm from New York. I'm from Harlem, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Are you learning stuff? Yeah. Do you like digging the dirt here and getting in, in, involved and watching these things grow? Yeah, Say it's yes. fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know this the the peas. You, don't, you can't put them too deep. If you put them too deep, they don't come up. See, these are space. Yeah. They didn't you know, come up because they were put too deep in the soil. Yeah. So and they take a long time for them to come up. See, these are coming up right here. Yeah, so, if, so with peas, you got to be careful how about how deep you get them. Yes. A little drink there. Yes. Is it amazing how simple it is to grow your own food? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. And it tastes and different, And it's so much you know? fun, you know? I'm glad to hear you say that. Not only does it taste different, because it's real food and it's not camouflaged with a lot of unnecessary meat. So we're not taking our food, uh, food stamps and going to the supermarket and buying junk food. If they buy junk food, it's an insult to me as a working person to have my taxes go to them, for them to go into the marketplace and buy junk when it's the biggest business in the world and you're not getting any nourishment from it. So how stupid can you be? If you're poor, the best...
best thing that you can do and the only way to bring the children into a status of of strength and intellect too because what you eat is what you are not only physically but also mentally is to give them the best break in the world and that's through the stomach yeah. would somebody like to taste the mushroom Me. for many of the children and adults who make the day trips from the inner cities to the farm getting up close and personal with food that has just come out of the ground and learning how to grow it themselves is a brand new experience Garden manager Manola Carter showed us some of what's being taught and gave us some helpful hints about garden preparation. Let me do all the work. I'll carry all the stuff for Okay, you. that's good. That's good. A real gentleman. Yeah. Now, this uh, bed has already been rototilled. Yeah, but we'll pretend that it hasn't. Okay. But, uh, well, no, we'll start with rototill. Okay. okay. Generally, one um, mistake that gardeners make sometimes is they make the beds too wide. So generally a bed is best if it's four feet wide because what you want to do is from either side of the bed you want to be able to reach to the center of it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, easy to harvest from you this side or the other side. two foot on each side, you got a little path here in between, you yeah. put a little straw down, help reduce the mud and all that and stuff. And the weeds. The Mulching weeds. is very important when you're gardening yeah. because it uh, reduces weeds, it keeps the moisture in the soil. What have you done here for soil preparation so far? For soil preparation so far, what we've done here is we tilled it. Uh -huh. And um, we also dropped on this bed, which is 4 by 35, uh -huh. we put six wheelbarrow full of uh, ripe compost that was made from horse uh, manure and cow. All right, so you, you're using a real manure compost. A real here. manure compost mixed with um, shredded woods and hay. Manola advises that if the compost isn't completely ripe when you till it into the soil, let it settle for a few days, then start planting. So you get the little containers and be very gentle not to disturb too much the root ball because these are like little tiny babies and you have to treat them thus. So, you know, you can hold it, grab it. Let's see. Push it from yeah, the bottom, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. You know. Yeah, see, they'll come out pretty easy. Yeah. Like there you go. So, mm -hmm. so we'll stick it up with just the. Kind of, Eartha, you're going to get your nails all dirty. All right, Eartha. Well, dirty I, nails. I have to go put myself back together tomorrow when I go to work anyway. So. There you go. All right, our first P is in. All right. Yes. We have to do a little dance. Da 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 da. There's that ancient P dance that everybody's been talking about. Well, I am by Cherokee. I had a tremendously beautiful dream one time, and it was rather recent. I was on a fork in a road, going in different directions, and there was nothing around me but absolutely beautiful blossoming trees, the cherry blossoms the dogwood trees, the magnolia trees. And I was deciding in the fork of the road, if I went that way, would I go to heaven? But if I go that way, it is so beautiful, I must be going to heaven too. So I want my whole world to be like that, here on earth. So the garden is like I am already sitting in heaven. That's a very good dream, Anne. I mean, what a fork in the road. If you've got to pick between two heavens, I'd say you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> You didn't turn around and see what road you were coming from. No, I turned around and I saw a man with a crooked stick. <laughs> so it made me go that way. Yeah. But I think this is the kind of feeling I have about nature in general. This is a terrific project, Project On Ongrow Growing. Yes, and Project On Growing means that the people who are homeless in the streets of New York or any this country can come to be a part of this project, On Growing, because as the saying goes, God helps those who help themselves. Wow. <laughs> Catwoman, Bertha Kit, whoever you are, right? Miss P. Planter, I can't figure it. Great job. Thank you so much for being okay. with us. Bertha Kit. Stay with us for more at Star Gardens. We'll be right back. Coming up next, a Wild West garden built by bodybuilder Corey Everson.